Hello! This is not a bookish video. <laughs> This is an episode of What I Made, um, which are occasional videos about things I've been making, my crafting life, which is knitting and crocheting and sometimes sewing, and right now a lot of spinning. I've been making yarn. <laughs> So um, I haven't done one of these in close to six months. I think the last one was in February. And to be honest, I have been busy. I haven't had as much time for crafting. And there are just some things that I've made or I've worked on and abandoned or I'm getting ready to abandon. And I'm just not gonna talk about those things. So I thought I would just do a really quick catch up on some of the finished projects I have and what I'm currently working on, which is like two things and um, then some future plans. So there is gonna be some things left out and that is okay. There will be another episode in the future where I can talk about more stuff. So yeah, let's start with things that I have finished making. Um, the cutest one is my most recent finished project. <laughs> um, I don't know, I got bit by the uh, the bug to make another toy. Um, this is a Triceratops. It is a crocheted Triceratops, and the pattern is Plod the African Flower Triceratops by Heidi Bears. Um, she has a whole bunch of stuffed toys that use this African flower crochet motif. Hopefully my camera will sort of focus. Um, so I saw a version of this Triceratops on Instagram. I think it was the designer Anna Johanna, who is a, a Finnish knitwear designer. Um, she had done a green version of this and I thought it was so cute. I had to make one and I did. I made this entirely from leftover scrap yarn in my stash. So it was a fantastic stash buster. And uh, she came out really, really well. <laughs> Mine is a girl and I've decided her name is Flora because she is made out of flower motifs. Um, I think she looks really cool. I love this color scheme. It was just, you know, I had enough yarn in these colors so I combined them this way and I think it looks really stunning. But because um, she's mainly black. It's a bit hard to see her features. Hopefully the camera is blowing out a little bit so you can see um, her face, but yeah. Um, the only thing that I didn't do quite right, and I'm, I'm still learning how to make stuffed toys. I don't really understand how to stuff things. Uh, patterns usually just say, start stuffing at this point. Um, but I didn't get um, firm enough stuffing in her legs, and I got more stuffing in her head and her body. So um, her, her legs are collapsing a little bit with the weight of her body. So she does, she does sit upright, um, like if you put her on a table, uh, but her, her legs are not quite as structurally sound as they should be. But aside from that, I think she looks fantastic. Oh yeah, I'm keeping her for myself, but one of my current works in progress that I've just barely started on is another one, which is going to be much, much scrappier, but I just loved how much yarn this used. <laughs> I mean, there's probably close to 180 grams of sock yarn in this one toy. Um, and I had enough in a, a slightly different color scheme, a, a more variegated color scheme to do another one. I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use up a whole bunch of, of leftover yarn. So my next one um, is going to be mainly greens, blues, grays, and more like cream. I'm hoping it will come out lighter. The, the main color should be um, like speckled cream yarns rather than a, the black that is on Flora. So crossing fingers that it works out. I'm just not sure how it's actually gonna look once um, they're crocheted up, but I've started working on the flower motifs for it. However, my most impressive and long-term project from the last six months is the sweater that I'm currently wearing. Um, so I will stand up and talk about this a little bit more. Um, there you go, you can see this. Um, so this is the Daydreamer sweater by Andrea Mowry, and pretty much the entire 
sweater is one by one cables. So there's one by one honeycomb cables in uh, four panels, two on the front and two on the back. There are one by one twisted stitch cables all the way around and up through the neckline. Um, then there are baubles everywhere else. <laughs> and then the sleeves are nothing but purling. So this is a really cool sweater and the neckline is really different. I've never done something with this um, construction before and it's really different. Um, I don't think I will ever make another one of these sweaters because <laughs> it was so time consuming. I mean, every other row in this was a cable row and doing these honeycomb cables is, it started to really hurt my hands. Um, but it's a really cool sweater. I love the color. This is, um, Jager spun organic merino, I think is what it's called. And I'm pretty sure the color is called burgundy or Bordeaux or something. So it is a 100% merino wool sport weight yarn. And I love the color. It's relatively soft, so it's very comfortable to wear against the skin actually. Uh, though I always wear like an undershirt under um, wool sweaters. Um, I didn't love working with it though. I found it to be very splitty for some reason and it could have just been a fluke, but a couple of the skeins that I that I cracked open for this um, had breaks in them. Like one or two of the strands in, in the plied yarn were broken or incredibly thin spots. So it was bad. And I don't know if that was like a manufacturing problem or I, I had this yarn for many months before I actually used it. And there is a possibility that like um, insects got into it or something. I've never seen wool moths here, the, the kind of moths that eat wool, but we do have silverfish here. There are silverfish everywhere in my house and they will also eat wool, um, especially if it is dirty or near the walls or dusty or whatever. So I don't know. <laughs> I've never had a problem before, but I, I don't know. So that was kind of disappointing because it is it is lovely to the touch and it's such a beautiful color, but I don't love the yarn actually. Um, I did have a lot of leftovers. I had two full skeins of yarn left over. So um, I have, so I have more of the red and I also have some tan and uh, brown in the same yarn line, which I think I have earmarked for a shawl that I want to make that takes three colors of sport weight yarn. So I feel kind of lucky there, but I'm not sure if I would ever like repurchase the yarn. Anyway, um, love the sweater. I made a mistake with the sleeves and we're not going to talk about it because I am not re-knitting one of the sleeves. No one will notice except for me <laughs> and eventually I will forget. <laughs> But yeah, it's a really cool sweater. I'm gonna really enjoy wearing it. And the, the V-neck is not as deep as I feared it would be. The neckline is actually pretty good. So I think I could I could wear it like this. I was worried that I might like have to wear it with a, um, a tank top that came up higher in the front or something. But this is, this is wearable. Let's talk about a couple of small things. And we're also getting into knitting with my hand spun yarn. <laughs> So in winter and spring, I kept wishing that I had fingerless mitts. My hands would get so cold um, and I was just like, I want to have fingerless mitts that I can wear at home or in the office. And I like coordinating things. So I was like, I, I need to have a collection of fingerless mitts so I can coordinate with my outfits and everything. I'm, I'm big into the accessorizing, what can I say? <laughs> my wardrobe is actually quite boring, but the accessories are not. Um, so I decided to start working on various fingerless mitts. And the nice thing about them is that they're fast to knit. They're even faster than socks or regular mittens. You don't have to knit fingers. <laughs> and they don't take that much yarn. So I had spun up this yarn. This is my leftovers. I still have about probably 30 grams of it. This is a 100% um, Polworth wool yarn. Um, I think it was a Fraptious Fibers braid um, in the color Cathedral. And I really didn't like the way it looked in a braid and I thought it looked kind of odd when it was spun up, but it's knit up beautifully. It's very stripey and the colors are really cool. So I have this leftover yarn and I made 
a pair of extremely simple um, ribbed fingerless mitts. Let me put these on and take off my watch because I didn't think about this. I always wear a watch now and um, that gets in the way of any sort of mitts or mittens or gloves or anything. So these are very, very simple. Um, I think I followed a free pattern. Like I just looked up like somebody else's um, like method of, of like placing a thumb hole or something. Uh, but for the most part, I just made it up based on the uh, the ribbing gauge. So it's just two by two rib. It's a it's a tube. There's no shaping, but um, near the top, I um, ended up going back and forth in rows to create the thumb holes. And I really like these. They're very squishy. <laughs> the yarn is very, very squishy. Um, so yeah, that's one pair of fingerless mitts. And I also made a ribbed hat that matches. And it is also very squishy and I will put it on even though I'm not a hat wearer. Um, I have been wearing more hats in winter and I like this. I wish that I'd made it a little bit longer. I would have liked a slightly deeper brim. I really like having like a fold up double or triple brim on a hat. So it's yeah. And I love that it's ribbing. It's uh, it stays on my head. I have a lot of problems with hats that don't like grip on my head. And because of my hair and my braid, uh, they start to like slide up <laughs> off of my head and I hate that so much. But yeah, I like this and I also just completely made this up. I did a little ribbed gauge swatch and then made it up from there. The crown decreases are not the best, but that's because I also made those up. And then, because I was on a roll with fingerless mitts, I made a fancier version, uh, which are really pretty. These are fingerless mitts based on the Sarma pattern by Inez Sung. Um, so it's actually um, a pattern for mitts where it's like all the way around your hand, but I just knit them up to the point where um, you have the fingers and did a small thumb. So these are really lovely. There's a tiny bit of like twisted rib cabling, but it's mostly these really fuzzy, um, is it popcorn stitch or something? I'm not sure. So um, this is Knitting for Olive yarn. It's the merino fingering held double with the mohair silk. And I don't remember the color. This is leftover yarn from a project that shall never be mentioned again because it was an absolute failure, but I really love this color of pink. I'm not really a pink person, but I like this color a lot. So that is a very toasty pair of mitts because it's silk and wool and mohair. They're very fuzzy and soft and I think they're really cute. I kind of want to make another pair of these in white. For some reason, I'm really into that idea and I have hand spun white yarn that I might use for it. Something without mohair, because these are very fuzzy and it'd be nice to have a pair that are not quite so fuzzy because mohair gets everywhere. <laughs> you know, if you have like a lot of mohair uh, fuzzy fibers in your, like, your sweaters and stuff, it does shed sometimes. <laughs> Speaking of mohair, I have two shawls to show you and this is the last of my um, knitted and crocheted projects. So um, we have another hand spun project with lots of mohair. Um, so I think that this pattern is called Bundle of Stars. Um, it is by Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery and it's part of her like solstice collection. There are four patterns she did two and I think Francoise of Aroha Knits did another two. Um, and I thought this was just a really cool and slightly different shawl. It's more like a stole. It's like a really long, um, what's the word? It's not a rectangle. It's got angled <laughs> um, ends to it. Anyway, the, the word will come to me at some point. Anyway, um, I did mine in two colors. The purple and the blue are both hand spun yarns. They are merino and silk blends. Um, and they were some of my earlier spinning projects. Uh, they're not the same weight, actually. The blue is heavier weight and the purple is a lighter weight. So it's kind of like a heavy DK and a very light DK yarn. Um, and it's held double with Knitting for Olive mohair silk. There's a blue 
and a purple, and then the accent color is a very, very light gray mohair. And I love this. I had to kind of make up a transition point in the middle. The pattern is actually like a single color all the way through, um, but I had two different skeins of yarn and it, it doesn't look too bad. I tried like four different ways of transitioning the color <laughs> and this is the one that looked least bad. <laughs> Let's say that. So this was a, a wonderful knit. Um, I really, really loved working on this. It was so much fun to knit with my hand spun yarn. This is actually the first project I ever um, used my hand spun in. And like every stitch I was going, oh my God, this is actual yarn. <laughs> It was really fun, um, but it is a, is a beautiful pattern. It really plays with texture. You have these wonderful like slip stitch patterns. Um, I love this end of the shawl where you are striping it and there are these mohair stripes. I just, I love it. Um, and then there is an, an applied I-cord edge all the way around with the um, contrasting mohair. So. It's very soft and quite warm. It's not quite as deep um, as I would have liked, but it's still it's still quite big. I pulled it out recently and was uh, surprised that I had misremembered it. Um, it's actually bigger than I thought it was, so. Um, I haven't been able to wear this yet. It is so warm, actually, that I haven't worn it during summer. I should take it to the office, though, because I could I could use it when the air conditioning is on full blast in the office. But um, the only thing about this which kind of throws me every time that I put it on is that the blue end of the shawl is quite heavy and the purple end of the shawl is very light and fluffy feeling. And that's because this is a denser pattern on one end and this is a lighter one. But also I use the heavier yarn on this side and I use the lighter weight yarn on this side. And in retrospect, I should have flipped them and it would have been a bit more even. Um, it's not that big of an issue, but when I'm holding it, I can feel the difference. And I just, I love the feel of the purple end. Um, I will talk in a moment about another shawl project that I want to do, which is quite similar to this, but, and I, I was inspired to go find a pattern that did this um, for some more hand spun. So I'll talk about that in a second. I also have another shawl, which I'm not actually that enthusiastic about, but maybe I just need some distance from it. And that is this. You know, it's actually quite pretty. Um, I cannot remember what this is called. I'm, I am so unprepared today, I'm sorry. This is, this is a shawl pattern by Anna Johanna from the 52 Weeks of Shawls book from Lina. Limelight, it's called Limelight. <laughs> so it is um, garter stitch sections, a little bit of striping, and then there are two lace panels in it. And it is a very wide, um, I'm not gonna call it like a semicircular shawl, um, a crescent shawl, that's the shape of this. Um, and I don't, for some reason, I saw these two um, yarn colors in my stash and thought, I want to use them together in this shawl. And I was just like obsessed. So I made it, but it's not done particularly well. That's why I'm not like super keen on this particular project. It is, it is a lovely and kind of like simple classic design. You can do a lot with it, with just the yarn choice and the color choice, but the, the base of it is quite uh, simple really. Um, but I just didn't knit it very well and I was aware the whole time I was making it that I was, I was fudging it a bit too much. Um, what I learned from this actually is that I've never really knit lace before. Um, before I did this, I made a different shawl a year, two years ago that has some lace. Um, that was more brioche and I didn't knit that very well either. And I have knit the Tenya sweater or shirt by Caitlin Hunter, which has a pretty um, interesting lace section at the hem but I also didn't knit that very well. <laughs> so when I was knitting this and I realized that I just don't have much experience knitting lace, it seems very straightforward to me, but I completely got the tension wrong on this first lace panel, it is much too loose. And then when I was knitting the second lace panel, it was much tighter and I kept making mistakes. I, I literally had to like drop down some sections like four rows and try to fix the lace pattern and I was just like I don't know how to do this 
this is difficult. So, you know, it's done and it will be useful. It's because of the shape of it, it's so wide. It's more like a scarf. I would wear it like this, you know, around my neck and underneath a coat. And I can always use shawls like that. There are a couple that end up being my favorites because they're just the right size for that. So I will get use out of it, but I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I probably just need some distance from it to, uh, you know, appreciate it more. Um, and I did, you know, get some more yarn out of my stash. Um, I used up all of this gold color, all of the green color. I ended up having to pull in a little bit of a different color that has some blue in it to finish off the section, but I used it all up. So that, that is Limelight. And those are all of the knitting and crochet projects that I have finished that I want to talk about. Now let's go through some spinning projects. I'm going to talk to you about yarn that I've made and my plans for how I'm going to use some of that yarn. And then when we talk about works in progress, there will be even more hand spun yarn. Can you, can you tell what I've been obsessed with recently? <laughs> I've been using my spinning wheels a lot. I realized looking at the yarn that I have here and also my current spinning projects, I've been on a green kick, which is kind of funny to me because red is my favorite color, but I have almost no red in my fiber stash. But at some point I was just like trying to find a good green and green is not a common color for spinning fiber right now for whatever reason. So back in December, I got this fiber, which is the other um, merino and silk blend that's very similar to the colors that I showed you in the, uh, the fluffy shawl. Um, so this is the same, it's the same fiber, it's just a different colorway as far as I know. And I had eight ounces of it and I got two fat skeins. Um, there's a story behind this yarn, I'm not gonna really get into it, but the, while I was doing this, I think I spun most of this in February. There, I went through this phase where I suddenly started to doubt myself <laughs> with spinning and I realized that while I like challenging myself with a lot of other things, I challenge myself with knitting and crochet and I'm learning more about sewing. Spinning seems to be my one hobby that I don't really care about learning the technicalities. I just want to spin my default yarn. <laughs> That's what makes me happy. Um, so I spun about half of this and then I started to hate everything and I felt like really down in the dumps because I just wasn't doing spinning right. And then I spun the rest of it when I realized that, nope, I'm just going to have fun. I'm just going to have fun with spinning. So um, these two skeins of yarn actually came out very differently. Um, so if you don't know anything about spinning, grist is a measurement, it's basically the ratio of yardage to weight. Um, the higher your grist is, the finer weight your yarn is. That means you have more yards per whatever weight. So there are different types of like standardized yarn weights. That's where you get things like fingering, sport, DK, worsted, Aran, bulky, super bulky, those sorts of things. And there are like ranges of grist that apply to each of those um, more standardized categories. Um, so when you're talking about like a DK weight yarn or a sport weight yarn, um, there is kind of a grist range for those. And I'm, that's what I mostly spin, like my, my default yarn, I just sit down on a spinning wheel, it's gonna come out as a sport weight yarn these days. <laughs> um, but for some reason with this project, um, one of these has a grist of 1200 and the other one has a grist of 926. <laughs> That's, that's a really big grist difference. So um, yeah, this one is 235 yards and the other one, which actually weighs less, is 290 yards. So um, you can even feel it in the skein. Um, but I can still use them together. They are not to the eye, like so incredibly different. So what I'm planning on doing is knitting a striped chevron shawl with these. Um, so this will be the main color and then it'll be striped with mohair and I've got two colors. I've got a green mohair that kind of, well, actually pretty well matches. And then I have some more of this um, silvery gray mohair. So 
I'm gonna have fun with it. Um, I'm gonna be using a free pattern. I think it might be a Pearl Soho pattern. Um, it's just a, a free chevron shawl pattern and I will have to modify it a little bit because I'll be working with heavier weight yarn, but it'll be a good basis. And w once I get going, it'll be a pretty mindless knit and I will have fluffy, silky goodness. <laughs> Next up is half of a sweater spinning project. Um, I have two skeins of the yarn that I haven't caked up yet, so I thought I would talk about the yarn now, and then I will show you the in-progress project in a second. But I wanted to spin yarn for the Metamorphic Sweater by Andrea Mowry, and it would it's kind of designed with a variegated yarn and a more like solid color for the main color. So you have a striping, but you also have color changes with your variegated yarn. So <laughs> I went for it. Um, so this is my variegated yarn, and you can pretty well imagine how that would knit up. Um, it's pretty long color transition, so it's very, very slow color changes when it's knit up. Um, and this is a mix of three different fibers. Um, there are three different colors that I combined, <laughs> so kind of like a, a combo spin. Um, I was trying to do a fractal spin, but with mixing different fiber uh, tops that were all solid colors. So I kind of got it, but I didn't realize how long the color transitions were going to be. So this was pretty interesting to do. I had to do a lot of planning and some math and I still didn't quite get it right, but it is working and we'll see that in a second. Um, so two of the colors are John Arbin Viola Merino tops, uh, the cinnamon and black currant colors, which are really beautiful. And then the more um, paler pinky color, that is the John Arbin Yarnadelic top in the color Pink Moon. So this is a combination of Merino and Corydale. You can kind of feel that, like the Merino is quite soft and more, um, not spongy, springy. Um, and the Corydale is a little bit rougher feeling. It is, uh, it's noticeable when you touch the yarn. So it's still pretty soft though, like I'll, I will be wearing it against my skin. And then for the solid color, I knew I wanted to do a gray. <laughs> I didn't realize how dark this variegated yarn would be. Um, it's gonna be a pretty dark sweater. This gray is also a combo spin. I love how this turned out. It is such an interesting yarn. It almost feels like a commercial yarn that I have felt before. Uh, so this is also a two-ply, and it is um, one of the singles is a um, lamb, like Gotland lamb's wool blended with bamboo, with a black bamboo. Um, so it is 90% Gotland and 10% bamboo. No, 80% Gotland and 20% bamboo. The finished yarn is 10% uh, bamboo. Um, and then the other single is a dark gray, 100% merino. So plied together, it's got a lot of fuzziness to it. Maybe you can see that. It is very fuzzy. It's got a very defined halo to it. Um, and it's shiny. There's some shininess to it from the Gotland and from the bamboo. And the Gotland is a very long staple fiber, so I had to spin it very softly so that it wouldn't become wiry, but that meant it didn't have a lot of twist in it. And the merino is spun more tightly, there's more twist to it, and so the the softness and the yeah, the bounce to it definitely comes from the merino, but the overall appearance, the texture when you touch it comes from the Gotland. It's very interesting. I did not really enjoy spinning the Gotland bamboo mix because the bamboo made it really slippery. It, would it was just falling apart on me. It was so difficult to spin, but it was worth it for the uh, final result. I just think this is such an interesting yarn. So yeah, and now I am knitting with it and it's not at all what I expected. These are definitely lighter, lighter weight, sport weight yarns than I thought they were. But you just don't know until you actually start working with the yarn. That's a totally different experience.
Then we have a quick and dirty spin. I told you I was kind of on a green kick because I was trying to find a properly green uh, top to spin. And I got this from Paradise Fibers. This is, it's not the creepy Corydale collection. This is Corydale with something else in it and I can't remember what it is. It is the Maharaj Meadowbrook colorway, if that's at all helpful. I will try to have links to stuff down in the description box. Um, so this is a traditional three-ply and I did this with the intention of trying to get it to match some other three-ply Aran weight yarns that I've been doing. Um, though now that it's actually spun up and I can see the color, it doesn't go with a color scheme I've been trying to make, but I have an inkling of an idea what I might do with this. It's actually a really interesting color. It's quite green from a distance, but when you look at it up close, it's very heathered with blue. There's like this blue silk in it. Maybe it's viscous. Oh, it's viscous. That's what it is. So there's like blue viscous. There's like rusty reds in there. There are some more like yellowy colors and then there's green. I think there's a little bit of like black or gray in it as well. So it's a very complex color and I thought I was going to not like it until the yarn was finished and I thought, you know what, paired with paired with a different color like a brown, this could be very, very interesting. And then this little bit is just a two ply. I did a, a bracelet ply with the remaining single that I had just for comparison's sake. It's kind of interesting to see how the same, how the same singles, the same spin turns out uh, when you change the number of plies. So there is that. Then we come to my magical spin. And this next one is um, like, I, I broke through two barriers with one project when it comes to spinning. Um, so I got some um, fiber braids from Nest Fibers a while ago. It was my Christmas present to myself. Um, and I finally spun up the first one and it looks like this. Um, this is, this merino. This is a 100% superwash merino in the colorway over the hills and through the woods. And this was one, it looked so cool in the singles. And when I started to ply it together, I was like, oh my God, it's gonna turn into mud. <laughs> um, so it does have a bit more of a brownish muted um, hue to it, the optical color mixing. When you look at it from a distance, it's much more green brown, but up close you can see that there are still the yellows and blues and a kind of rust colors in this. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I thought I was gonna hate it and then I really warmed up to it. Um, the fantastic thing about this is that this is a fingering weight, a fingering weight two ply. I finally spun something finer than sport weight. So this has a, when we we're talking about grist before, um, the green, the sea glass green yarn that I showed you had a, a grist of between 900 and, what was it, 1200? Um, however, this fingering weight yarn has a grist of 2000. <laughs> this is 98 grams and it is 40, 440 yards. So that is absolutely a fingering weight yarn. And it's decently spun, decently plied. There's enough twist in it and I am thrilled. But the second thing is that I was trying to do a fractal spin with this and I completely botched it. We won't get into the details, but I completely botched it. Um, and I ended up with um, one of my singles being a bit finer than the other and I had more yardage. So I had a ton of leftover singles on one bobbin. So I decided to chain ply it and I got this. So once again, chain plying helps you preserve the colors in a variegated yarn. So instead of having a lot of barber pulling when you're plying two different colors together, um, you are doing a three ply through a chain. You know, you're literally chaining it as you are spinning it um, together. And that means that the same color is being plied back on itself. So you get something that has less color mixing longer sections of a solid color and a little bit of barber pulling in some of the transition states. So this this is really fun. I, I like the look of the colors more in this chain ply than in the two ply with a lot of the, um, the barber pulling. The fun thing about this is that this is a sport weight three ply yarn. 
I may have lost my brain slightly when I did the measurements because that is my dream yarn. Since I started spinning, I thought to myself, it would be amazing if I could make the kind of yarn that I most enjoy knitting with, which is a three ply yarn. It's rounder and plumper than a two ply and a fine, a fine yarn. So I was always saying at the beginning, I want to be able to make a three ply sport weight yarn. And I have, which means it is now time to spin for socks. <laughs> One more spinning project to show you. And that is this yarn, which is my first time spinning from a carded bat. So you can get commercial tops, which have been processed. They're very smooth. All the fibers are in the same direction. They are really prepped for more like commercial spinning. Um, and the fibers can be very loose and very easy to spin. And then you can get other um, fiber preparations and one is a carded bat and this this came from a an art bat which is somebody had a drum carter and put various fibers and add-ins together and ran it through the carding process to mix them together and they take that big literally like big like square of fiber and you spin it and that is what this is my first ever attempt at spinning from a fiber bat so this came from fat cat fibers. I can't remember if that's the name of her Etsy store. Um, she has some really beautiful fiber bats and I got to get more of them. This is, I think it's a repeating or, or repeatable fiber bat that she does called Counterpoint. And it is a gradient from kind of red through orange through like tans and purple blue and then kind of into smoky grayish blue and it's got neps in it so it's very tweedy it's got silk in it it's got stellina so it's got sparkly bits in it it was so interesting to spin this and i chain plied it because i spun it as the gradient from the fiber bat and then i wanted to preserve the gradient so i chain plied it and that that is that. I think this is mostly Polworth. There's something in it that's a little bit scratchier, and I think that is hemp. So it's Polworth with hemp and silver and some other add-ins like the, the Neps and um, the Stellina and stuff. So such a fascinating spin. I was just like, this is so different and experimental for me. And I did that during Tour de Fleece. It's the only thing that I actually finished during Tour de Fleece. And that's my dog in the background. Ava, are you okay? <laughs> anyway, I have run out of time to film right now, so uh, I'll be back on a different day to finish this up and show you my works in progress. This is officially the longest it has ever taken me to finish filming a single video. Um, I can't even remember when I filmed the first half of this. I think it was maybe the end of July. It is now the middle of September, it has been so long since I filmed the first half of this that I started and finished a large project. <laughs> so um, I have more finished things to show you. I, I don't remember exactly what I talked about before, but I'm pretty sure I talked about the spinning, but I hadn't talked about works in progress yet. So I'm going to show you a couple more spinning projects that I finished and then another finished knit object, and then we'll get into works in progress. Um, I have gone through a green phase. I, I, I don't know, I mean, I like green, but my favorite color is red, so what is going on with me? Um, so during Tour de Fleece, I had started this kind of combo spin experiment, and then I took a break from it. Um, after Tour de Fleece, I didn't get it done, and it was just a lot of very fine spinning that I didn't have time for, but I actually finished it and that's what this set is. So I had these two braids of fiber. One is this kind of bluish gray, like a, a slate gray. Um, it was a, a Corydale bamboo mix. I think I think it was mostly Corydale and like 10% bamboo and slightly over dyed. Um, and then I had this really fun green color. I think the colorway is actually called funky green. <laughs> 
um, which is also incredibly sparkly. It's got a lot of Stellina in it. And I had these two braids of fiber together and I thought, wow, they look great. What if I tried to combine them? But I liked them so much on their own that I, that I wanted the solid colors as well. So I divided the fiber in a way that I could get equal amounts of the two colors on their own and then a combo ply. So we have the green, the green and the gray uh, plied together and then the gray. And I was most interested to see how the combo ply would turn out and it is interesting. I was expecting there to be a very heavy, like obvious barber pulling effect of these two colors together, but instead because the yarn is so fine, um, it is very, very mixed. So it just comes out as this grayish green color, which I think is very interesting, but wasn't quite the effect I thought I was going to get. And then we have the gray, which was kind of a combination of light, medium, and dark grays and this green, which is a very like apple green color with some yellow in there. And they're so, so pretty. So all three of these are basically fingering weight two ply yarns. Um, and I think I got them spun up pretty similarly to each other. Even though the Corydale is a long staple fiber, it does take twist a bit differently from the um, very short fiber merino. Um, so yeah, they came out pretty nicely. I'm happy. And what I plan on doing with these, I get this other one. I have a tendency just to throw things on the floor when I'm done with them and then I can't reach them. <laughs> So I have these three colors and um, I probably have at least 700 if not 800 yards of this. I haven't done the measurements yet. And I have a bunch of this um, fluffy alpaca lace in my stash. I bought it um, without realizing it was technically a boucle yarn and it, it wasn't good for what I bought it for. So I have 1300 yards of this alpaca boucle yarn. And I thought, what if I combined these into another brioche project? So I'm hoping to do another Seriously Holy Shawl. It's a pattern by Stephen West. Um, I've made one and it's my favorite shawl that I wear right now. I want another one so badly and it's so fun to knit. So that's my thought. I'm gonna do kind of this color block gradient with, with these three colors as the main color. And then I'll probably hold this alpaca lace double as the, um, the background color in the brioche. Uh, we'll see if I have enough of this alpaca yarn to hold it double, but I need to knit a little bit of a sample. I'm very excited. Like I'm gonna cast this on as soon as I have my, my yarn measurements. And then the other spinning project that I finished very quickly is this thing. This is um, completely BFL, if I remember correctly. So it's 100% BFL. Um, it is from Three Waters Farm and it is a colorway called Lichen. And it is a traditional three ply. So it's a very plump and squishy yarn. There's a lot of barber pulling in it as well. I did a fractal three ply, which basically means that like this is a, a hand dyed yarn with color progressions throughout it. So I, I split it up into three and then I split it into strips so that the color prog progressions were more and more frequent for each ply. So I think I did two, four, and eight. Um, I would have liked to do 16, but I don't think I could have stripped it down to 16. Anyway, I've, this is my first time really succeeding at a fractal ply, and I think it came out really nicely. So um, not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but I have a gray, brown, black mix that I'm gonna spin up the same way, and they'll probably go together very well. I'm thinking more brioche, because that's what I do, right? <laughs> But yeah, I want to knit with this so badly. It is so round and plump, and it's probably my best job at, at plying yarn so far. So very, very happy with this. So that's that. Let's see the other thing that I finished. I really hope that this shows up on camera, but I'm never sure if variegated yarns really show up well. This is a shawl. This is the project that I um, started and completed in between video segments. <laughs> so hopefully you can see the lace detail on this. 
This is the Floraline Shawl by Erin Currup, and it is knit with Essence of Autumn Gilded Merino yarn in the color Pearl of Cortez. Um, I bought two skeins of this yarn because I thought it looked so interesting. The, the colorway just really drew me in, even though it's not my, my typical thing. It's a little bit more of like a pastel version of my favorite colors. It's also a little bit rainbow. Um, but this yarn also has gold Stellina in it, so there is a sparkle that I think is a bit more obvious in person. Uh, but yeah, I got this yarn and I thought I'm going to make a lace shawl with this, so um, this is the pattern I settled on. And I love it. It's so cool. This is the first time that I've knit a shawl like this, um, where it's just, you know, fingering weight yarn and lace. This is my first real lace project and it was a little bit challenging. This lace is maybe not super beginner friendly, um, but I, I had a lot of fun with this. I did lose yarn chicken. Um, the final lace segment is supposed to be the deepest one, but it's actually the same as the middle and that's because I had to rip back when I realized I was going to be about eight rows short of the end of the pattern so I ripped it back and I finished it off in a slightly different way and I think it still looks pretty good. It still looks intentional. So yeah that is the Floraline shawl. I also was very good. This is the first time I've ever properly done this. I alternated skeins throughout this entire shawl. <laughs> I had to because um, hand dyed yarn there are no dye lots and the two skeins that I had were quite different from each other actually. One was very pink and one was a little bit paler and more uh, green. So you might even be able to tell that there's some difference in this upper portion, just the way that the color pooled. That's one of the reasons why I don't really love variegated yarn that much because even if the colors are stunning in skein form, I hate color pooling. I hate, hate, hate color pooling. <laughs> I despise it. But anyway, that is my other finished piece. And finally, I have two works in progress. I used to have more, but I actually just abandoned three projects. I'm not going to talk about them, but uh, two of them I realized I was never going to finish for reasons, and one I need to restart sometime in the future. So now I'm just down to two, and this first one is very simple. Um, I decided I needed some uh, plain knitting for my Worldcon trip, and so I just have a pair of socks that I am making. These are just vanilla socks, um, cuff down, and I'm, I'm knitting them very long because I like long socks, and I'm almost to the point where I will um, turn the heels. I'm going to do the Fish Lips Kiss heel again, uh, which is what I've been doing for most of my vanilla sock recipe things. I am using this. I think this is a Cascade Yarns sock weight yarn. Um, it is one big gradient. Um, I thought it was going to be stripey, and then when I caked it up, I realized that it is just a gradient. Uh, so my socks are, as you can tell, since I'm, I'm working from either end of the ball of yarn, um, I've got a very blue one and I've got a very pink one, and they will probably only meet up at the toes, <laughs> if that. So they are coordinating mismatched socks, and I am fine with that. Um, not much I can say about a pair of plain socks. And then my big project on the go is a sweater. This is my hand spun metamorphic. So this is what it actually looks like right now. Um, and yeah, I think it's pretty interesting so far. The yarn is knitting up really well. It's not quite as soft as I thought it was going to be, but also I haven't like finished it and blocked it and all that. Um, my only um, regret actually is that you can see how big the striping sections are and that they're not consistent. And part of this is my mistake. Um, I stopped at one point and cut my yarn and used it to do something else. And so I missed out on some on a transition period. But um, I wish that the stripes were thinner 
and maybe in a different sequence. I had planned it all out when I was spinning the yarn, so I very intentionally put colors in a certain order um, or didn't organize them in some instances, and I'm not sure that it came out the way that I was expecting. So, yeah. Aside from that, though, this has been a fun thing to knit. It's been a pretty fast knit when I actually sit down to work on it. I've, um, I'm almost done with the body. I need to do the ribbing on the body, and then I'll just have the sleeves. So, yay! And I'm not sure how well this is showing up on camera. Let's see if I can get it to, like, blow out. This is another thing that seems to look better in person. <laughs> but it's a bit difficult to tell with my very small viewfinder if the the stripes are really showing up or not. So that is my metamorphic and I'm just very curious to see what this will look like when it is finished because I think like one of the final stages to understanding spinning yarn is to actually knit with it, to understand like how the colors work, how that yarn feels, what it works up into, and I just don't completely understand color and hand spun yarn yet. So um, part of me wishes that this wasn't so experimental because it is a garment. Um, on the other hand, this is what I enjoy making, so I would like to become familiar with using hand spun in large projects like this. And yeah, so that is that. It's a really lovely pattern. I enjoy every pattern that I have done by Andrea Mallory. I really like how her patterns are written, and I think a lot of her designs are just really beautiful, kind of like classic with a little bit of a twist. And yeah, I think that is pretty much it for works in progress. I do have one spinning project in process, and I don't know if I've ever addressed this, but you can see these massive bobbins on the shelf behind me. This is a very, very big spinning project that I have been working on for close to a year now. Basically, I have a little bit less than a pound of this plain oatmeal BFL fiber. And uh, when I started this, I was still learning how to spin finely, and it was my practice uh, project, like how finely can I spin this BFL? And I've got it two thirds done. I'm gonna be doing a traditional three ply with it, and I'm hoping I will get a DK weight yarn out of it and a lot of yardage. I have uh, one more big bobbin to spin up, and then I will get to ply it, and I have a project in mind for it, but that will be months down the road. And yeah, I think that is actually it. Um, there are a bunch of things that I want to start making right now, and I'm trying to not cast on a million things. I am currently in a shawl phase, so the next time I do one of these crafting videos, uh, I may have multiple shawl projects on the go. <laughs> like, I can think of like four different shawl patterns that I want to start right now. <laughs> We'll see what I do. Anyway, let me know what you are up to with your crafting, um, and I'll be back soon with more stuff to talk about, I'm sure. And until then, bye.